green hydrogen is basically taking water and using electrolysis. So you're using an electro electro electrolyzer, which is powered by renewable energy, to split apart the water into hydrogen and oxygen and using that hydrogen. So there's another, there's another couple of processes where you can, as I said, you can use coal gasification, you can use something called steam reformation of gas to actually uh, ex extract this uh, hydrogen to use, but uh, there's also nuclear energy, a, a variety of other options. But at the moment, we're seeing most kind of momentum in the world behind green hydrogen. Um, and all the states actually, or I think bar, may, bar maybe the ACT, uh, states and territories, have uh, hydrogen strategies now that exclusively focus on green hydrogen or, or certainly on a cleaner pathways than what, the, well, than what the federal government is actually talking about in their own national hydrogen strategy. And here's the thing, though. It's going to require a lot of renewable energy mm -hmm. to be able to extract the hydrogen if, if we're going to go down the green hydrogen route. We're not ready for that yet, are we? No, we're not ready, but no one in the world is actually at the moment. So green hydrogen is basically only about 1%, I think, or under mm. of what currently hydrogen we're producing in the world. So we do use a lot of hydrogen in industrial processes, in chemical uh, production, etc. But we're basically looking at like a whole new world of using hydrogen to power uh, cars, to power power stations, heating, to use it as a feedstock, but using it, uh, basically opening up this whole new world of green hydrogen where it would be actually creating new opportunities for renewable integration into the energy market. So basically at the moment, like renewables only produce about 5% of the world's energy. Um, so we, if we want to get to net, uh, net zero, we want to um, satisfy the goals of the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement, we need to actually get renewables increased or we need to find new pathways to get renewables into the economy. And, and hydrogen is conceded, considered the, uh, the sort of silver bullet to be able to do that. Basically, there's no way we can actually reach our climate goals mm without hydrogen. Yeah, and you, you see that in other parts of the world as well. That's Europe, right. of course, where it's absolutely central. But That's that right. means we're going to have to build our renewable absolutely. infrastructure. Yeah, we need... Uh, so the International Energy Agency basically came out with a strategy, well, a paper looking where we're at, at hydrogen, on hydrogen, uh, I think only last week. Uh, and in terms of the infrastructure and in terms of, like, the lowering the costs of hydrogen, green hydrogen in particular, you're going to look at, like, upwards of a trillion dollars around the world, private and public funding. And I think the, the public funding side of that was ranging about 90 billion US dollars. And that's looking at kind of getting hydrogen into the economy by 2050. So there is a, a lot of spending that needs to happen. So, and, and also I, I would draw your attention to some of the projects on the East Coast have actually been making mm. some news. But in Western Australia, they're talking about some absolutely mega projects. One on the South Coast of Western Australia, looking to have about capacity of about 50 gigawatts of renewable energy. Now that's about not much less than what we have for the whole electricity grid in the whole of Australia currently. Wow. Uh, so it's absolutely massive projects you're talking about. But uh, we're seeing the demand emerge in places like Japan, in Korea, in Europe uh, for our exports as well. So they're sending signals to Australia basically that they want to see us create these huge projects. Uh, there's demand for it emerging all around the world. And exports, I think, is the big opportunity that will actually kickstart what we can do in the domestic space in Australia as well because there's much larger demand, obviously, and we hopefully get some of that foreign investment that's previously helped us to create renewable uh, resources industries like natural gas or coal or, or iron ore or uh, yeah. those sorts of things.